there's nothing that powers me up more than religion. Religion's like, it's like giving a dog a bone. I'm like, literally like, let me at him, let me at him. I don't care if they criticize me, I criticize me, but I will defend the gospel and I will defend how radical it is, inclusive it is, extraordinary it is, how over intoxicating it is, how radically beyond and beyond it is, you know? I just, I, I just, I love the gospel. The gospel's got in me. It's too late. So this Beyond Human book is too late. There's nothing new in here. 2,000 years ago, Jesus split it open. And we are just catching up. We're just catching up with the goodies, guys. We're just waking up. We're just starting to see it. We're starting to believe it. And this is a drop in the ocean. This is just an intro. This is just a couple of peanuts in the dish in the restaurant before you have the full package of Jesus manifesting in your body, transfiguring you. Yo, yes, arise and shine. Nations will come to the brightness of your rising. There's no pulling this thing back. I'm sorry, there's no going back. There's only one way forwards, and that is the new creation invading earth, heaven, heaven on, oh, wow, yes. Whoa, heaven on earth. That's an idea. Oh, I wonder what religionists will think about that. They'll go, oh, we can't have too much of heaven. We, you know, oh, we've got to limit it because it's just, you know, too much. But, you know, let's go for it. Let's go for it. So here we go. Your new life is hidden, enmeshed with Christ in the anointed. That's the voice, Colossians 3.3. 3. I'll read it again. Your new life is now hidden enmeshed with the anointed woo colossians 3 3 in the voice you've been Im enmeshed it's too late you've been enmeshed in the anointed one and this is what we're exploring okay so all have been upgraded it says in colossians 3 4 the exact life in christ is now repeated in us we are being co-revealed so it's a co-co co-crucified co-buried co-raised co-revealed the cocos of the gospel Way hey so you've got to enjoy your cocoa, drink your cocoa, because you are being co-revealed. It's you and Jesus together. It says in Colossians 3, when he appears, you appear with him in glory. There's no separation in this. It's too late. Christ has come. Elijah didn't have that. Moses didn't have that. John the Baptist didn't have that. I know that's awesome what they had, but you've got something greater. It's called the new covenant. <laughs> This is good stuff, isn't it? I love it, love it, love it. Okay, so you know I use this verse every time. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. The past is finished and gone. Everything has become fresh and new. Everything has become fresh and new. So we're in an era where everything's fresh and new. From now on, everyone is defined by Christ. Everyone is included in Christ. Or the New King James says it like this. Christ is all and in all. So what we're going to do now, and we're going to take a little breather, we're going to do a quick engagement with the realm of light and a quick enjoyment activation to give us energy to get through this session. So, so let's just take a deep breath. And that is Ruach HaKodesh. You are breathing in the spirit of life. Feel your feet on the floor for a second. Let's get centered and engage the breath and life of God. We don't need any formula. We just breathe union bliss. It's too late. All you have to do is accept it. All you have to do is believe it. All you have to do is enjoy it. Now breathe in and come into this moment. So let go of anything else. Nothing else matters right now. Just enjoy the light of his face. And breathe it in. Relax. Woo! Take some deep, refreshing breaths. Every breath is filling you with life. Every breath is filling you with joy. I'm in you, Lord. Breathe in, you're in me. You can even do this where you lean forwards. I'm in you. You're in me. Whoa. And now very gently, just ascend into the light. You're already with him. You're already in him. Just focus on the light. Don't try and imagine it. Just sense the light. Sense the expanded state of light that you are already in. You are children of light. 
in a kingdom of light. Arise and shine. Just get really big, allow your heart to get massive. Like filling up a balloon with light. It's getting bigger and bigger. Woo! Wee! Jesus. I love you, Jesus. <laughs> yeah, so all this is one thing I do use from Julian of Norwich as a mantra, which is this all is well and all shall be well. All is well and all shall be well. Or you could say another word like shalom. There's a frequency on it. Shalom. Feel the frequency of that word. Shalom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you could say Yah. That's God's name, Yahweh. Yah. In German, that means yes. So Yah. <laughs> Yahweh. <laughs> Yahweh. Oh, you can say oh, oh. <laughs> you can say wow, wow, wow. There you go. So just open your heart, that's all it is. It's all about awareness, awareness. Coming out of the busyness of your mind and creating spaces between the thoughts for God to fill. It says, let heaven fill your thoughts in Colossians 3. So where does he fill? He fills the silence between the thoughts. So you make room and saying things like shalom keeps your mind busy and out of the way whilst your spirit expands. Woo! It keeps your brain following, your spirit. Yum, 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 yum. Yahweh. Woo! You can feel like a swirl, like an expanse. Now thoughts do come to you, but you've got to learn to let them go like clouds and come back to the sweetness. This is called practicing the presence, practicing mysticism. You just let those thoughts go and turn into the sweetness of union and the oneness that you have with him. And breathe. And breathe. All is well. And all shall be well. Whew. Okay, very gently now, just become <laughs> aware of your body again. Just feel your feet on the floor. You might want to wiggle your fingers to try and come round a bit. Just come back to me. It's, I know the more we do this, it's harder to come round. That's okay. What I'm teaching you is just how easy it is. Just you can use your breath at any time to get into the union. You're in union, but what I'm talking about is your awareness of union. You're always in union, but your mind sometimes isn't. So what we're doing here is turning our mind into where our spirit already is. And then our body joins in. That's why you start to manifest. That's why you start to get drunk. Because where your mind goes, your body follows. And it, what it is, is trying to get your spirit soul and body all enjoying it together and that's why we use meditation mindfulness and contemplation and i'm going to show you now guys what happens to you when you do that okay now you've seen some of these slides before but i want to help you because we're talking about infused knowledge how would you get infused knowledge this is the shock guys you ready for this the shocking news is you are surrounded by frequency energy and vibration all the time the the jewish the jews teach that wisdom's already in the room but you just like light but sometimes we have the lid on and we have to open the lid and just let wisdom in all of the religions practice meditation and even scripture says meditate day and night or be still and know 
So there's a place where we go into union in stillness that's more powerful than anything else we can do. It's where in stillness you entangle into God and your brain joins in. Your brain stops thinking about what, what you're going to do next and it starts to come into this realm. And then what happens is it opens up then to this realm. But you have to tease your brain to join your, your spirit because your brain wants to run around all the time doing stuff. So you have to train your brain through centering, contemplation and meditation to come into the union in the inner being and then it expands like that. And you begin to sense everything that's around you because your heart determines your vision. Your heartscape, your landscape of your heart, the size of your heart determines your sight. So Paul said, open, enlighten the eyes of my heart. So when you go into your heart, it expands. Now I'm going to show you um, how that works, okay? Here we go. Now get ready, guys. Here we go. Screen share. Now, Rachel, can, we, can everybody see this? Can, yeah, can I'm see? here now. I'm here. Great. I can, can see it. Here we go. So, guys, come with me on a journey. I want to show you how to be not just here, but become a, a sensory engine where you are receiving electromagnetic, energetic, light, frequency, spirit and vibration, and you live in infused knowledge. So this is a diagram of a real energy field that the heart produces. Now, your heart is a living, thinking organism. As you think in your heart, so you are. Scientists have found it contains memories. It sends more signals to the brain than the brain does to back down and it actually manages your brain. So the way of control in your brain is through your heart. And this is how it works. We all want we all want our heart and brain to work together. OK, so we want our heart to be in union and our brain to follow. So it explodes with thoughts from heaven. See, your mind is used to dealing with the earth, but we want it to deal with the whole of creation which means it has to explode. The lid has to come off, okay? And God wants this for you. He wants to share the mysteries with you. So this is how it works. Mindfulness, you might have heard this a lot in our culture. It's a peaceful mental state achieved by focusing one's awareness on the present moment while calmly acknowledging and accepting one's feelings, thoughts, and bodily sensations. So mindfulness is becoming aware of right now you are receiving. You're receiving sound, energy, taste feelings and sensations so instead of thinking about last week or next week you're in the moment you're in the now the power of now when you're in that moment have you ever been in that moment where you feel the sun you smell the flowers or you taste your food you enjoy your coffee you enjoy your friends when you're in that state you're entering into a meditative state of union because all meditation is is awareness and oneness and connection it's not a new age term. The Jews practiced it long ago. It's in the old covenant as well. Now, what happens is when you come into these positive emotions like appreciation, your heart beat, your heart rate book variance becomes a smooth pattern. So things like thankfulness, joy, love make this beautiful curve pattern, but anger, frustration, resentment don't. So we have to move from those negative emotions into appreciation because what it does when you move into love and life your brain becomes coherent and works better within itself so incoherent brain waves where you're, you're you're everywhere but coherent is when you're moving as one your brain is enjoying the flow and what happens is as you meditate and engage union after 25 minutes your two hemispheres power up look at these these are real brain scans and they show the difference between a normal person and someone that's been in the spirit meditating. After 25 minutes, your brain is fired up. It's working as one brain, not two hemispheres. And you are getting downloads. You are getting infused knowledge. You are in the flow. And it doesn't just affect your brain. This is from the HeartMath Institute. Your body gets affected. Your heart rate your heart rate variability, blood pressure, your respiration, everything goes into coherence. In fact, your body heals faster. You can actually heal yourself, cuts heal faster. Your whole body goes into a state of union too. And this is how we're designed to function. This is the state of optimal function. 
And then all these other brain waves kick off. This is really exciting. We haven't got time to look at all these. But you'll start by having alpha waves, theta waves, delta waves, gamma waves, epsilon waves. And you go from normal beta. Beta is where you're just thinking about what you're doing and your life and your job yada yada when you meditate and come into sweetness with god and union and your breath you come into alpha waves and you start to get solutions and then it just goes higher and higher from then and even your energetic field powers up so these are real graphics of energy fields around human bodies before and after meditation. Look how much more powerful the light is. This is actual photons of light and electromagnetic energy coming off human beings. In other words, you are made to live in the spirit. You are made to function from meditation and union and bliss and oneness with God. And when you're at peace within, you create peace without. And it powers up your fields and that sends information to other people and you can read other people's information. And the earth does the same. It sends electromagnetic knowledge like old cassette tapes and you can read emotions off each other, thoughts off each other. All of this is science, by the way. There's thousands and thousands of case studies on this on Mart Heart Math Institute. OK. And it even affects everyone working together. And I've talked about this before, where we entangle. You see it in orchestras. You see it in football teams. You see it in artists and scientists where they get into oneness. And that flow of infused knowledge is just all around them. When you live in the sweet spot of this generous present moment, where you let go of the story you tell yourself of the past, you let go of the story you're telling yourself about the future, and you live in the now. You're living in union now. Now is the day of salvation. You're in union now, oneness now, enjoying now, moving in the now. Woo! And you have to train your brain to do this, guys, because your brain's been trained to look at screens, always be thinking, always be worrying, always, and, but that's primitive thinking. We have to move to higher consciousness that all is well. The result of this is that you power up the whole system and you'll find that all these old mystics did this they called it the science of love the science of mysticism Teresa of Avila Catherine of Siena Jean Goyon all the great heroes of the faith knew how to enter into this state where it all powers up they called it ecstasy they called it rapture they called it trances they called it flights of the spirit they called it enlightenment okay are you guys good yeah yeah, all good. I could present more science because this is all scientific. We could measure your body. I could actually take you through meditation and we could see your brain would change. Now, this is an interesting thing. If you do it enough, the change becomes permanent. It only takes six weeks to engage your brain with, with neuroplasticity. You're, you will reduce the parts of your brain that are connected to fear. It'll actually shrink in your brain physically within six weeks of meditating every day. And you, new areas connected to compassion, connection and empathy will open up. And basically, we're designed to live in this sweetness. Every human's designed to live in the flow. Every human's designed to live in the now. Letting go of the story you tell yourself of the past. Letting go of the story you tell yourself of the future, knowing that you're in now. You just clicked into reality. So Bill Johnson says it like this. He says, repentance is a sustained change of thinking about the nature of reality. I'll say it again. Bill Johnson from Bethel says, repentance is a sustained change of thinking about the nature of reality. And the nature of reality is this, we're in. We are crammed, crowded with God. Jesus, Paul himself said, God could do exceedingly, abundantly, above and beyond all you ask or even dare to think according to the power where? At work, in you. So where have you got to go for infused knowledge? You go into sweetness because love is the gateway to the unlimited. Love is the higher technology. So Paul put it like this. He said, prophecy is a childish thing. When I thought like a child, I acted like a child until I embraced the way of love. And he said, when I, and love is a person. 
So when I stepped into love, which is the being of the Trinity, I went into the unlimited realm. And he said there was no end to it. There was no limit to it that you can go into the unlimited realm of life. What matters is that you get into synergistic flow, heart coherence with God, and then you will produce fruit in abundance. You will, fru- you will see, you will engage, you will experience. But even if you don't have all those amazing technical experiences, you will be happier. You will be clinically happier because you're in the joy. You're in the wine room of love. I don't go into my prayer closet trying to get lots of downloads. I've got to be honest with you. I say, Lord, I just love you so much. Come, let's do this. Let's get in the love wine together. And I spend time crying, laughing, or just sitting there. Just sitting there because I've learned that if I sit there, I'm being filled with knowledge like a, like a cat in the sunshine. And I don't even know what knowledge I'm being filled with. It's just creeping in there. It's like I'm breathing it in and I'm getting a sunbeam on me. I, I just want to be a cat on God's lap and he can stroke me and I'll purr. And I tell you what, I purr good. I purr good for Jesus. I, I'm allergic to cats. But in the spirit, I am one because I just sit on his lap and he can stroke me and I will purr. You know, because that is what union is like. And that's what all these saints understood. They were all intoxicated, all inebriated by love. Yes, they helped the poor. Yes, they changed the world. Yes, they suffered for Jesus. But they said it was all working for them, a more excellent way of glory. Whoa. Okay, so love. This is what Teresa of Avila said. Why am I talking about love? Well, this teaches on infused knowledge because love is infused knowledge. Have you ever loved a baby? Do you know that the baby gets knowledge through love? Have you ever loved a dog or a cat? Do you know that that speaks volumes? Have you ever made a painting that touched someone or a song that touched someone? Do you know that gives you infused knowledge because infused knowledge comes through love? Have you ever loved a plant and watched it grow and it's taught you? It's spoken to you about how things grow and how you can nurture them? Have you loved children and seen them develop? Love is infused knowledge. So if we want to know all the secrets of heaven, like Enoch, Enoch walked arm in arm with God. Enoch, like Paul, Paul said this, I'm a love slave. He's a love slave. He was a love slave for Jesus. He was hooked up to Jesus. He said, the love which Christ has for me, I'm quoting Paul now, the love that Christ has for me leaves me no choice. That's what you want to get to, guys. You want to feel so lovified, so loved up, so jacked up on Jesus's love wine for you that then it's like you're in it. You live your life in the spirit, in the spirit at all times. Woo! And I know that's sorry for people who are trying to make a career out of being prophets. But remember, prophets are here until we reach perfection. So let's not aim at that. They're meant to be the foundation that jack you up. It says the apostles and prophets are the foundation. They're not the main event. I consider myself a prophet. So my job is to see you moving in all that Jesus is. Woo! Because remember, the testimony of prophecy, what did Paul say? Is Christ. The testimony of prophecy is Christ. In other words, everything is meant to release Christ. Woo! 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 This is good stuff, guys, because how many of you guys know it's got to go way further than it has before? Don't feel like I'm kicking against the old. I'm not. I'm saying that was the first step, but we've got the whole ladder. We've got the whole ladder in Jesus. Do you know that all those runs and gates and doors are in you already? and You've got to pop them open. Do you know there's one thing that does make me want to cry and weep over the church is is how we how we have not understood the gospel. You know? It breaks my heart when people send me emails saying you've made it too big or it's not for everyone. I'm like, which gospel did you believe? Were you given a tiny Jesus, like a tiny slice of Jesus? Like, let me just cut a little bit of Jesus off. Or were you given the full Jesus? Do you know, Paul went as far as to say this in Ephesians. He said, in Christ, you have been given fullness. Fullness. Or the spirit without measure. Come on. Okay, so Teresa of Avila said this, the important thing is not to think much, but love much and to do whatever best awakens us to love. I'm going to say that again. What's this got to do with infused knowledge? Everything. She said this, the important thing is not to think much, 
but love much and do whatever best awakens us to love because love is where we're going. The love is the order of Melchizedek. Love is the door to the next stage. We've got to get rid of all hatred, judgment, nastiness, all that, that's got to go. So love is the beginning and the end. Julian of Norwich, the first woman who wrote a book in English that we still have today, she said, I lost myself in joy and almost forgot who I was altogether. How many of you guys want that? Where you lost yourself in joy <laughs> and you forgot who you, you were altogether. That is the mystic realm. That is infused knowledge. So we want to move forward into it. And it's by understanding this, that God shares himself with us. He doesn't withhold himself. He's the yes and amen. So it's not a case of will he give you knowledge? He says, call to me and, answer, and I'll answer you and show you great and searchable things. God's not the one putting the barrier up, right? The barrier is your thinking. It's this bit. And this is why we have to move from the heart coherence where your brain then submits. Like I love what Bill Johnson says. He says that the brain is a poor master, but a great servant. We have to train the brain to serve, not dominate. We have to flip it over and live from the heart flow. And I believe we're going to have more gatherings and conferences where we're just enjoying that creamy love. And they'll be going like, but you didn't preach anything. Yes, we did. We preached something in another way. We preached something that changed the atmosphere. I've got a friend, you know, he was engaging Yahweh in his back garden and a branch grew out on his tree because it was so much life coming from his body. And he showed me the branch in California. The same thing happened with St. Bridget on the day she was anointed to be the first woman apostle in the in the Celtic church. She got hit by a wave of glory. She steadied herself on the balcony, the wooden balcony and branches grew out of the balcony because she was so full of God's glory and love and spirit. Whoa. Woo -hoo, woo -hoo. So listen, guys, the logic of all of this is that we live in the realm of oneness. Oneness is the frequency and the language of the new creation. You'll see it'll say oneness and together and you're in constantly in the new creation. Well, so God can give you knowledge about anything. Now, I've had criticisms of me because I teach science. It's all spiritual. It's all in him. It's all in him. You know, Plato was the one that separated matter from the spirit. I've been reading the Hebrew writers and they believe that every atom is, has got the yod in it, the yod of yod hey vav hey, and they believe every atom has an angelic structure. So they don't believe in a two world model, and I don't. If I'm preaching on quantum physics, I'm talking about the spirit realm too. If I'm teaching on family or marriage, it's the spirit too, because marriage is a pattern of heaven. If we talk about food and cooking food, it's part of heaven, it's all connected. So God can give you downloads on any subject. He can give you downloads on fashion, computing, light technology, anti-gravity technology. He can give you downloads on a new way to create fishing lures or, or paintbrushes. He can give you fashion downloads, anything, because he it's all about the dance. It's all about the dance. He can show you about how Michael, the archangel, functions and how you can turn into the energetic structure of the archangel because you're in Jesus so you're surrounded by the canopy of the archangels and you can develop a relationship with each one through desire because you're in him he can teach you about that he can teach you about the realm of heaven the throne and above the throne and the above the throne or the realm of one this outside of there he can teach you on how to bend space and time he can teach you how to eat right live right there's nothing out of the conversation because God is the voice even the stars, you can study the stars. It says the stars proclaim the glory of the Lord. Day and night, they pour forth speech. So you can actually study stars. You can study astrophysics and God will speak to you through nebulas and through the cosmos. Woohoo! Woo! So check this out, guys. What the Lord showed me when I was in heaven was that he will give knowledge, not just to Christians, but to anyone that has an open heart. If you have an open heart, I was in heaven. This was in 2010 with Enoch. And I saw the father looking at the earth and the courts were legislating. All these scrolls were flying, right? 
And I looked down and I saw most of the people catching the scrolls weren't Christians. And I saw all these people with open hearts getting solutions for clean water, getting solutions for clean energy, getting solutions on how we can do things better. And open hearts, this is why artists get downloads. This is why scientists get downloads. Did you know that most of modern science came by infused knowledge? I'll just go through four now. The periodic table, you know where we have all the elements? That came in a dream to Dmitry Mendeleev. He said, it all formed in my head, but I can't express it. I saw in a dream a table where all the elements fell into place as required, awakening. I immediately sat down and put it on a piece of paper. So God gave him the periodic table, the universe, because God is in it, the all in all, spoke to him. This is what I want to tell you. You can increase your conversation with God. I wrote a list and I said, Lord, these are the things I want to know in union with you. You don't have to tell me I love you. And I listed these. I said, I want to know what beings are in the cosmos because I love the stars. I want to know about the aliens. I want to know about different dimensional beings. I said, I want to know about the angels and the angelic structures, how they function, which worlds they function in, what their government is. And I want to know about the true history and timeline of the earth, what really happened in the past, what really is going to happen in the future. And I just listed these things that were in my heart. Now, for some of you, it might be more basic, but my mind was on things above and that's OK. You might want to know how to grow the best crops, how to produce the most fun for children. Wow. Because get this, guys, that is just as important when you this is one of the things the Lord taught taught me for God. God, there's no big and small. There's no big and small for God. He, he's infinitely in the small and infinitely in the big, and he cares equally about it all. He's the all in all and all of it's in him. So the smallest thing, like bringing joy to your kids by playing with them with dough or something, is just as wonderful as seeing a supernova or a nebula. It's all beautiful. So what's in your heart? What would you like to know? What conversation would you like to have with God? The other thing I discovered was you, what you want to influence or govern, he'll speak to you about as well. So like if you want to change arts or education, he'll speak to you about that. Your city, he will show you things. Your heart is the issue. How big can you make your heart? Can you make it big enough for angels? So he talks to you about angels. Can you make it big enough for the stars and galaxies? Whoa. So the atom, so we take the atom for granted, but Niels Bohr, Boher, who, who, who discover the atom says in a dream you saw the nucleus of the atom with electrons spinning around it like planets going round the sun he had a gut feeling that it was accurate so dedicated his research to prove in his theory he won the nobel prize for physics for his breakthrough guys i know people that are having dreams like this right now i connect with technology groups through nancy cohen where they're having downloads on new kinds of water that multiply crops uh, like computers um, energy computers, artificial intelligence. Um, some of the conversations I'm on would fry your brains. I mean, some of the stuff that God's giving people right now. So the challenge to you guys is what do you want? You're powerful. You know, the problem with the old church move, it makes you a victim. It makes you a victim of the year. It makes you a victim of politics. It makes you a victim of whether you're black and white. I tell you, in the new creation, there's no black and white. There's no male and female. There's the new being of union and is open. You don't need an open heaven conference. If you believe it's closed over you, you create the closed heaven because you're powerful. But remember, scripture says, lift up your head, O you gates. Be lifted up, you ancient doors. Let the king of glory come in. Jacob's ladders open. You don't need another conference, although I love them and I go to them and I speak at them. What I'm saying is you have fun now. Have fun now. The glories come now. Christ in you now. OK, what about DNA? We all know the spiral. We all know about DNA, but there was a time where people didn't understand DNA. And James Watson, who discovered DNA, saw a spiral staircase in a dream in 1953. No one had developed the idea of a double helix structure for our DNA. He went on to win the Nobel Prize in physiology and medicine in 1962. So guys, are you listening? The periodic table came from infused knowledge. The atom came from infused knowledge. The, uh, the DNA came from infused knowledge. What about Google? Would this shock you guys to know Google came from infused knowledge? Now, Google's been a lot of help to 
us, hasn't it? I use Google all the time. Thank God for Google, right? I'm not saying the way they do everything's perfect, but the idea is great. Google, Larry Page, he dreamed he could download the entire web into some old computers lying around. So he got up in the middle of the night to do some maths. When he realized it was plausible, he took two years out of studying to create what became Google. So Google came from infused knowledge, guys. Woo! <laughs> I'm going to have a look at your faces because I've been going a while. Let me have a look. Are you guys enjoying this talk? Is this okay? It feels a bit offensive, but I'm not against anyone here. You hear me, right? I believe in you so fully that I'm willing to like smash up the system of religion, even my own success, because I don't care about my own success. I'm in it for all of us together. I'm in it that we all become incredible. We all become shining ones. We all have infused knowledge. We all engage the angels. We all see visions of dreams. We all manifest in creation. We all affect nature because there's a whole cosmos waiting for us. This it says all creation's groaning. So at some point, it's got to get bigger than the man of power on the stage. <laughs> Who wants that anyway? That's too much of a burden for any human being. I want to see transformation in all of creation. And that means we've got to start to learn about stuff that we don't learn about in church. Now, some people say you only have to talk about what's in the Bible. God doesn't do that. God talks about the periodic table. God talks about DNA. God talks about God talks about atoms. God talks about butterflies. God talks about children. God talks about Andromeda. God talks about seraphim and cherubim. God talks about space and time. I'm not going to limit myself to a book that the Bible already says is too small. It says in it, it says if all of Jesus did. Now, you know me, guys. I love the Bible. I do. This is a promise. I love it. But what I'm saying is that doesn't replace union. I love the word and I go into the realms, but union is where it's at. Union with God. Union with God. Union with God. The living word in me. You know, I've been in the future many times. I saw a time in the future where you speak living words. It will be so in you. If you want a verse for that, it's already in the Bible. It says you will need no man teach you, but you'll all be taught by the Lord. It's the order of Melchizedek. The order of Melchizedek doesn't carry around a King James version. Or, or, or American Standard, NASB. You are the oracle. That's what Moses was offered, and he turned it down. Remember, they said, if you speak to the rock. And he wouldn't have it because he knew they would idolize him, and he was afraid of what that would look like. So he wasn't allowed to enter the promised land because he refused to transition into the Kainos age. But there are people that will transition into it, and they will bring forth waters in the wilderness. Woo! OK, so one of the big ways you get infused knowledge, I feel like, honey, can you come on for a second? Am I, am I hey, do we stop okay? now or are we, we doing good? <laughs> We're doing good. They're all loving it. <laughs> I feel like I don't, I don't know how much you guys can handle. Can you handle oh, more? That. You see that? Can you handle more of the extravagant love? Keep it going. More? Don't stop. More, more. Keep going. Oh, I know. Keep going. Yes. This, the problem is, it's yes. like it's messing you up. You will never go back to where All you were. I don't want you to go back. <laughs> I want you to never go back to where you've been. That house is too small. That brain is too small. That heart is too small. You are limitless. You are limitless. Mm -hmm. You are limitless. And we know the old age Come is on. going. God's just shutting it down. We can keep trying to revive it and put plasters on it, but it's God is shutting that thing down and he's releasing something so beyond it that all the nations Ooh. will turn and remember God. It says, arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. Woo! Shaka banga donga bonga dinga bongi bongi bongi. <laughs> Whoa. So another way God speaks to you every night is in dreams and in your sleep. It says in Job 33, in a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls upon men and women while slumbering on their beds, then he opens the ears of men and seals their instruction. I want you to know, guys, every night you are being filled with light. Why do we wake up with energy? Why do our bodies get regenerated at night? Because when we don't engage the spirit enough while we're awake, 
So in the fallen state, we keep sleeping because God needs to draw us up into that realm. I believe that sleep is a substitute for ascension. And that one of the reasons the mystics like Catherine Sienna and all those only needed one hour of sleep a night or one every three days or Nancy Cohen, you know, Nancy Cohen can live off 10 minutes sleep in 24 hours. She does sleep for two hours usually, but she can live off 10 minutes of bubble up in God. Why was Jesus able to go up on the mountain all night and pray? Because he lived in the ascension. He energized his body from above. Why did many of the saints not sleep for sometimes weeks at a time? Because there's a realm there. There's a realm. And we'll talk about that in another session. But I just want to say this. What happens when you sleep right now is you go into a trance and you go into the spirit. That's why you have dreams and visions in the night. But it doesn't have to be that way. But in the night, God hides wisdom in you. Now, every night, even if I have a bad sleep, I know I've, I've been, been infused with knowledge. And many times I'll know things without knowing how I knew it. It's often because you are always in, guys. There's never a time where you're not in. You are in Christ. You are, he is in you and it's constant. And your spirit doesn't sleep. I slept, but my heart was awake, it says in Song of Solomon. Now, how do we amp up our sleep? I'll tell you now. By getting your brain to join your heart just as you're falling asleep. I do this a lot. I'll listen to a meditation or I'll just enjoy God and I'll slip off when I'm enjoying him. If you enjoy him, it gives an updraft and you'll have more expanded states. You might have more remote sight. You'll see things. So when you're falling asleep, just take a minute to enjoy that moment and fall into the rest and yield to it. And you'll find you go places in the spirit more. So in the sleep, God can give you big upgrades. Now, one friend of mine, Joshua Mills, had an incredible upgrade in the night. I'll, I'll read you what happened. He was, it was during the Toronto move, and he wasn't sure about the drunkenness, so he was rejecting it, but he got whacked at a meeting. He was so drunk that his mum and dad had to carry him back to his room in the basement and put him into bed. The next morning, when he woke up, he could play the piano. He could play the piano, and since then he's been able to play the piano. Now, that's happened a lot in history, um, where people wake up with abilities that they didn't have before. So how would you like that, to wake up playing the piano? Anybody want that? What about waking up knowing another language? Mm -hmm. Come on. Remember, we've got to dream bigger. You might be triggered by that and think, no, no, I can't. I have to learn it the old way. I'm spending hours. That's a truth, but there's a truer realm that we need Babel restored. Now, John G. Lake saw this. John G. Lake was able to speak Italian once, and it's in my book. He was able to speak Italian at the train station because mm -hmm. he saw some Italian men and thought, wouldn't it be glorious to speak to them? And God said, you can. So he went in the spirit. He walked up to these Italians and they spoke for 15 minutes about Jesus. And he had never spoken Italian before. I've had two chat times where this has happened to me. I had one time in Germany where for 15 minutes I could understand what they were saying at the dinner table. I could understand it perfectly, but it wasn't through the words. I could understand it through infused knowledge. And I had one evening in Italy where the same happened to me, where whilst they were talking, I, I felt like I knew exactly what was going on. Whoa. So this realm's open, okay, guys? And it's happened a lot in the past. St. Bridget in my book, I, I talk about this in my book, St. Bridget, the Celtic saint, we get the word bride from Bridget. So bridal comes from her name. And she was at a chieftain's house to do a negotiation, and they were hanging around with the father of the house, but the son was out. And there's all of these violins and instruments, but no players were in the house at the time. So they just started picking up them, and the, the father-in-law did, and God supernaturally allowed each one that played, they'd start plucking, and then they could play it fluently. And there was such joy breaking out and glory breaking out. They're all playing and singing these Irish songs. It must have been amazing. The chieftain comes back, and he gives them the, what, exactly what they want, because he'd said he'd never seen such joy on his dad's face as the glory was breaking out. And his dad was playing like this instrument that he never played before. 
Yeah, somebody saying photographic memory. I know someone that that happened to in one of our meetings. There was a young woman called Natasha. She had an encounter with God in one of our meetings. God gave her a photographic memory. She got all A's in all of her exams, went to university, is like a straight A student because she could read a page once and see it again. It was recorded in her mind. And she got that in one of our meetings where God gave her infused knowledge of the ability to have photographic memory. Woohoo! Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yay! Yeah, someone's posting about pastor suppressor. Yeah, 17 language from 17 languages. This is what happened, guys. You know, Pentecostalism in the early meetings in Azusa Street and Bonnie Bray, when they got baptized in the spirit, they could speak earth languages. The first woman it happened to at the piano, I've forgotten her name now, she was given 11 languages that she could speak fluently. 11 languages in one moment plus playing the piano and it came on her listen okay, guys we wow. i don't know what happened to the charismatic move i think we went off track somewhere we forgot what, who we were we forgot the unlimited realm of god we forgot how big god is and we tried to package him into little packages and nice tidy meetings with cool haircuts and light displays and we missed something we missed the trances and the ecstasies and the honky conky piano playing and the joy and you know i think god's trying to rescue us from the charismatic move and bring us into a much bigger world so you know another way you can get infused knowledge is through yeah somebody said we left the mystical i agree there were so many teachers raised up in the 80s and 90s that warned about the new age if you're against something, you're blocking the gateway all the time. And I think when we start to say, oh, they're new age, they're new age, we shut down so much. But we are a kingdom age. We are kingdom age people. So another person who moved in this, I've said before, was St. Columba. And there's a section in this book I really love, and I've highlighted it. It's where he had an ecstasy. Now, I often get downloads through ecstasies. Ecstasies are where you're enjoying the sweetness, and it's like the cork pops, and it goes, boo like that. Now, I've had many, many ecstasies where I've been taught things. But in this book, it smells so good, guys. It's so delicious, honestly. Nice. Anyway, the book's right in the middle. It's a small book, actually. This is mostly commentary. When St. Columba was living in Hinba, the grace of the Holy Spirit was poured on him in incomparable abundance and miraculously remained over him for three days. How many of you guys on this call right now, because you can frame this up, would love a three-day ecstasy with the Lord <laughs> where you don't leave your room when this happened, lights were shining out of his room. Lights were shining out of his room. I'll take a three-day ecstasy from the Lord. Would you, Rachel? I would, most definitely. <laughs> During this time, he remained day and night locked in his house. It's a lock-in, guys. How many of you guys would like a lock-in with Jesus where you're locked in your room for three days? You say, honey, I'm not coming out. You have to take the kids to school. I'm locked in with Jesus. Where he was filled with heavenly light, no one was allowed to go near him, and he neither ate nor drank. This happens a lot with mystics, is they're getting so whacked, they don't mm. really eat any food. Um, but from the house, rays of brilliant light could be seen at night. <laughs> How would you fancy that? Your neighbors thinking you're having a disco in your bedroom at night because you are just so <laughs> encountering God, you're in the disco glory with Jesus. And the, the, the rays of brilliant light could be seen at night escaping through the chinks of the doors and through the keyholes. He was also heard singing spiritual chants of a kind never heard before. How many of you guys would like some spiritual chants never heard of before? <laughs> and as he afterwards admitted to a few people, he was able to see openly reveal many secrets that have been hidden since the world began. While all that was most dark and difficult in the scriptures laid open and clearer than light in the sight of his most pure heart. Guys, I've encountered in ecstasies many times and my teachings have come from them. Enoch was another one who had ecstasies. He said, I was shown all the mysteries of heaven. Over and over again, he would ask the angels, he'd say, show me this, show me that. And the angels would go, why, why do you wanna see it? And he would go, because I do, because I do. And guess what guys, they never said no because they love you. They want you to see. It's all about union. It's all about appetite. It's about what you want to see. 
listen to this. I've written notes in it. So good. I've said, I love this. And I put my name next to it because if I love something, I want it. I put my initials there. So it says this, after this, I saw all the secrets of the, he of the heavens. I saw all the mansions of the elect. It's beautiful. He saw wisdom, the fountains of wisdom. He, he saw incredible things. He saw the lightnings. I saw lightnings and the stars of heaven and how he called them by all their names. Wow, would you like to know the names of all the stars and the lightnings of heaven? How they were weighed in a righteous balance according to their proportions of light. Look at this, more again, the courts of heaven and, and, and the saints. Wow, clear descriptions of Jesus, the fountains of wisdom. See, guys, this is what Papa God wants you to have. I've had many such encounters. Okay, I'm going to end in a second and then we'll have Q&A. So just to share a few other people that had this, Roland Buck. Roland Buck was leaning on his desk and, and, and just preparing his work for the Sunday morning. It was 10.30 at night and he heard a voice say, come up to the throne of God. He was pulled up. And over six months, he saw all this crazy stuff. I write about it in my book. I saw my, um, I had my head down and my arms on the desk. It's in the book. When suddenly without warning, I was taken right out of that room. I heard a voice say, come with me into the throne room where the secrets of the universe are kept. How many of you guys would like to know, <laughs> would you like to know the secrets of the universe? Would you like, Rachel, I saw that, Pia, you want to know the secrets of the universe? That's awesome. Linda, you want to know the secrets of the universe? That's cool. I want to know the secrets of the universe. So Roland Buck was a pastor. He said, I didn't have time to answer. Space means nothing to God. It was like a snap of the fingers. Boom, I was right there. How would you guys like that? A little snap of the Amazing. fingers. Notice he didn't have to fly through second heavens. He didn't have to go through layers because he's already there. You're already there. He said, during this visit, God truly gave me a glorious glimpse of the hidden secrets of the universe, of matter, energy, nature, and space. That's cool, isn't it? So God was talking about space. God was talking about science. God was talking about... <laughs> so it seems like heaven talks about stuff that's like, that we're... Okay, wow. So he went, this, this went on. He thought he was there for several months, but it was five minutes. Suddenly I came back to my office and saw myself with my head on my desk where I had been praying. Wow, until that very moment, I thought I'd been in the throne room in my body, but I was not. The Lord has a wonderful sense of humor. And there's a lot of laughter and joy in heaven. I could see the back of my head and I remarked, Lord, I certainly did not know the back of my head was getting that white. How many of you guys would like to see how gray the back of your head is as you come back into your body from heaven? But listen, this is what happened. He said, God gave me special illumination of over 2,000 verses of the Bible. Instantly, I knew these verses and the scriptural references by memory. I have no way to explain how this was done. I don't need to recall them. It's like seeing them anytime I want. He also had world events put in there, 120 world events and he, they all came to pass in detail okay i've run out of time this is what always happens so i want to show you one person who really moved in this realm of knowledge and we're just gonna have one last share screen i want to just i want to show you william branham in action because william branham i i know this was a prototype paul keith davis and others have been told this william branham if you stood in front of him it would open when the angel was with him, he would see how you got ill, what your name was, your address, and he would see you healed. And whenever he saw it in a vision, it was 100% healing. It didn't matter what you had, terminal cancer, cerebral palsy, anything. If he saw it, you, he, he had it. Okay, so here we go. Let's tap into this. We're going to go to William Branham. Um, Rachel, you'll have to let me know if this works. Now have faith. Watch this way, audience. And believe with all your heart and give me your undivided attention. Be in prayer. Keep faith in God. Now, I believe this is the lady. Is this the patient? Yes. All right, come near, sister. Of course, that won't hurt you now. That's, that's just his presence that you're conscious of. And I, 
an audience. I'm, I'm your brother. I, this is not psychology. I felt that come into the audience. It isn't. It's Almighty God. Yeah. See, see. It's not psychology. No, it is. Now, don't do that. Just think of being the Lord Jesus. See, and one a car. Now, sister, I just want to speak with you just a moment. We're strangers, I suppose. But Jesus Christ knows the both of us. This is our first time meeting on earth. But he knows you, and he's fed you all your life. And he knows me. And if I, your brother, and by his grace, by a divine gift, that I had nothing to do with the coming, when I was born a little baby, the first thing I can remember was the vision. <laughs> now, I want you to look this way just a moment. Of course, you're sick, and you're suffering with uh, a condition that's a, it's a dark spirit around you. It's death, and it's in a form of cancer, and the cancer is located on the breast, and you're seeing you're examined by someone strong, and it's a, you've got a, a ruptured condition, and the rupture is in the bowel. And you have a stomach trouble also, a severe heart trouble that caused you fainting. Uh, uh, here a few days ago, you're sitting sideways on the side of a bed and nearly passed out looking towards your window. Are those things the truth? Yes, it's that all was true. All true. Well, whatever it was, of course, it's gone from you. But what do you think that was that knows your life? Was it Jesus Christ? You accept it to be that? Yes. Thank you. I You're willing, you know that something supernatural is here. Yes. And if you believe it to be the Lord Jesus, as I have preached it out of the Word, and you believe it to be the Lord Jesus, yes, I, do. I know there's a dark spirit still hanging at you yet. It's something very serious. Yes. Say, I see you. Your name is... Uh, Eva, yes. and your last name is York, yes. and you live in this city, yes, and your house number is 613 6th Street. Yes. Is that right? Yes. You're going home to be well. Oh, in the name of Jesus Christ, you. may you go and be made well. God bless you. Don't go rejoice in heaven. Wow. Absolutely awesome. I'm going to look at you guys. What did you think of that? Incredible. This is this a series of books you can buy. You can get them on Kindle. I highly recommend these books to The Life of William Branham. It will really, really encourage you. It will expand you. I believe he was a he was a prototype. Why was that realm open more for him? Yes, it was sovereign, but that was where he was engaging relationally with the Lord. See, it's all about relationship. Where do you want to engage relations, relationally with Yahweh? What dimensions do you want to open up? Which realms do you want to open up? Because in union with him, he gives you the desires of your heart. So the verse for that is delight yourself in the Lord. What does delight mean? Enter into that sweet union I taught you. Mm -hmm. Delight yourself in the Lord, right? And what does he give you? The desires of your brain? Heart. Your heart. He gives you the desires of your heart. So in other words, enjoy God, turn into the creamy sweetness, go into the breath, the union, you're enjoying him, and then he gives you the desires of your heart, so your heart speaks in union. When you're in union, your heart will release a frequency to Yahweh beyond words, and God will read that. And that's where you open up your heart to God, and you allow him to ravish your heart. And he feasts on your heart, and he begins to speak to you in the area where your heart desires. So for me, he's, I wanted to know the science of the unseen. I actually said to that to the Lord, I said, teach me the science of the unseen. And that's how I was able to write this book, because I got it from the Lord. All the stuff in this book, I journeyed out through relationship with the Lord, and then I'd find it in books, and I would see it in books. And God wants to open up the conversation with you. Um, there's a lot more I could say on this. It should have probably been a two-part series but it's his good pleasure to give you the kingdom. He really wants to do it. Listen to this, Jeremiah 33, 3, we all know it. Call to me and I will answer you 
and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. I'll tell you marvelous and wonderful things that you could never figure out on your own, things beyond what you can imagine. So we're in the age, guys, and you've heard this on the podcast of the Mystic Housewives. I had this dream of a mystic housewife. She was just cleaning her house, but all the time God was infusing her with knowledge, speaking to her as she was vacuuming and preparing the house and doing all this stuff for the kids. She was engaging Yahweh. And then in this dream, she said to her pastor, can I speak this Sunday? The Lord's given me something. And she stood up in the church and she said, you all know me but I've been walking with the Lord in the mystic realms for the last seven years. And today I'm going to begin to teach you the mysteries of Christ. And she began to speak from seven years of cleaning the house where she had been taught more than any university, any online course, any conference. She'd been feasting on the living manner and living in mystical union with God. And she was a new oracle. And I'm telling you guys, there's a generation rising who will be new oracles and they come in old and young. Whoa, every background, every stream of thought, because we're all one in him there we go guys i feel like i'm gonna land it there because i think i've said enough but mark 4 22 for nothing is hidden except to be revealed nor has anything been secret but that it would come to light whatever's been done in secret will be shouted from the rooftops we are going into the age of apocalypse and the apocalypse means the unveiling of reality so get ready guys for whatever conversations you've been waiting for, now's the time for the open book. Daniel saw it, where many will become wise and many will walk in wisdom and many will drink from the wells of wisdom. Do not limit yourself to your age, your ethnicity, your IQ, your gender, your past experience or history matters not. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, you can be caught up. In the moment, and in a twinkling of an eye, you can be changed. It's all about how much do you want and about love. If you will become an ambassador of love, if you will become a love slave, then you will find truly all things are possible. All things are possible. And love wins. Amen. Amen.